All right, let's talk about how to complete the square. And this is a procedure that uh, it's uh, pretty confusing for a lot of students at first. So if you're struggling with it, that's uh, pretty normal. But um, what we're going to do is walk through this particular problem. And uh, once you learn how to do one problem, then you can do all problems, right? So that's going to be the main idea with this video is to teach you how to complete the square. And this is absolutely essential if you're studying algebra or uh, beyond. But before we get into this, let me go ahead and uh, introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over many years, I constructed what I like to believe is one of the most robust, comprehensive math help learning programs. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video. Also, as a math teacher, I'm a huge uh, believer in notes, just uh, things that I've seen over uh, several years of teaching math. Those students that take uh, great math notes or have great math notes do well in math, typically, and those students that struggle taking math notes or have no math notes or um, sloppy, disorganized. And by the way, that's the way I was when I was in high school. Uh, for example, I was not good at note taking, but this is something that you need to work on if you're not there yet. But uh, in the meantime, you need something to study from. So I offer uh, math notes. I'm going to leave a uh, link to those uh, in the description as well. And those would include pre-algebra, algebra one, uh, algebra two, trigonometry, and geometry. Okay, so if you need a, a pair of math notes, you can check out those links in the description. All right, so let's get into uh, completing the square. And before we do this problem, let's just talk about what we're trying to do here. Now, completing the square is a, a technique that um, it's typically uh, we first learn it when we're learning how to uh, solve quadratic equations. All right, so this is uh, for most of you out there, you're probably um, studying quadratic equations and learning about uh, completing the square. But this procedure comes up um, even beyond uh, quadratic equations. So it's just something that we can learn um, how to do. Um, and it just comes in handy, this particular skill. But you'll see it even beyond uh, quadratic equations. So let's just talk about quadratic equations real quick. So how do we solve quadratic equations? Well, the easiest type of uh, situation would be uh, taking the square root of both sides, right? So if you have a quadratic equation like x squared equals 16, I could take the square root of both sides and solve, right? So this is what you want to do if you can. But another way you can uh, solve quadratic equations is by factoring, all right? And it's important that I kind of put this in context because you need to know why, uh, when and why you need to use completing the square. So factoring, uh, for example, would be something like say 2x squared minus 4x equals zero, okay? So this particular uh, quadratic equation Okay, I can go ahead and factor out a 2x and write it like this. All right. And let's just see here, 2x times x is 2x squared. So 2x minus 2 is 4x. So now I can set each factor equal to 0. Now, hopefully, you know how to solve quadratic equations like this, which I've taken the square root of both sides and factoring. Now, this is one example. Of course, we can factor trinomials, etc. So this is a big... Uh, technique, very beneficial to uh, factor quadratic um, uh, polynomials if you can to solve. So, you know, if it's nice and easy, you can take the square root of both sides or you can factor. You always want to do those things. But when we're stuck, okay, and you can't factor and you can't take the square root of both sides, then we have our trusty uh, friend, the quadratic formula. Okay, so all of you out there uh, hopefully know how to work with the quadratic formula. And if you don't, I have uh, um, many videos uh, on my YouTube channel about the quadratic formula. But then we have this thing called completing the square. Completing the square. So what is this? Well, completing square is kind of like the long version of the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula is kind of like the shortcut, if you want to think of it that way. Uh, the kind of streamlined version of what we do with completing the square. We actually derive the quadratic formula from this process of completing the square. So you might say to yourself, well, why do I need to learn completing the square when I could just go straight to the quadratic formula? Well, in practicality, in practicality, 
you do want to use uh, the quadratic formula. You don't really use completing the square um, as kind of a primary technique to solve quadratic equations, but you need to know how to complete the square because, again, uh, your teacher's going to want to see you uh, be able to do these problems, and this comes up later on, just learning how to complete the square is a technique that you just need to know how to do, okay? So there's other reasons why we need to learn how to complete the square. Okay, so this just lays out some context of what and why we need to know how to, um, you know, deal with completing the square. And with all that said, let's get to our problem. Okay, so here it is. We have a, um, a quadratic equation, right? So it's x squared. Okay, this means this is indicating the highest power is uh, 2. So it's a polynomial to the highest power of 2. This, this is a quadratic equation. First thing you want to do is to write this thing in standard form. So um, meaning that we want to go from highest to lowest power. We want to set this equation, whatever equation you might have, you want to set it equal to 0 and write your x squared, x, and then your number like so. Okay, so this is in standard form. So they can see here that we have this uh, quadratic equation in standard form. Now, the next thing you want to do, okay, before you start uh, uh, the procedure on completing the square, is to make sure that the coefficient in front of your x squared term here is 1. Okay, so you can see we have a 2 here. So we need to have a 1x squared. So i got to fix this up. And to get a 1x squared, to make this uh, 2 go away, I just need to divide everything by 2. Okay. And when we do that, we're going to have a new equivalent equation, and that would be this. Okay. So I have x squared, or 1x squared, minus 9x. Okay. So 18x divided by 2 is 9x. And 16 divided by 2 is 8. And then 0 divided by 2 is 0. So this is the first real step of completing the square, okay? You've got a uh, quadratic equation in standard form, and you have 1x squared right there uh, as your leading coefficient. And um, once we have this kind of set, then we're ready to kind of, uh, to uh, really get into completing the square. Now, remember the objective, or you might, we have to think to ourselves, what is the objective of completing the square? Well, we're trying to solve this quadratic equation, okay? And the way we're going to do that is we're going to create a square, okay, on one side. So, look, for example, if I have x plus 3 squared equals 16, this is kind of the form of an equation that I want. So we're going to take this uh, quadratic equation and we're going to rearrange it so I have a square, okay? Something like this, x plus 3 squared equals 16, because then I could just take the square root of both sides, and I have x plus 3 equals positive or negative 4. Okay, then of course I can solve this. Now, if you're confused with what I'm saying here, chances are is you're probably struggling with these other techniques that I'm talking about here, like how to solve by factoring and taking the square root of both sides. So if you're not strong with just solving quadratic equations with those techniques, then you're probably going to have even more trouble with completing the square because the procedure alone it can be a little um, confusing. Okay, so first things first, again, we have to have that 1x squared right there, and I fixed that up, and now let's kind of, you can see I already did the work here. Uh, let's move on to the next steps. All right, so once you have a 1x squared, okay, minus 9x plus 8, the first thing you want to do is you want to get this number, whatever it is, you want to move it to the other side of the equation. So this is just kind of the recipe uh, or the procedure you're going to follow, okay? So that leaves us with x squared minus 9x equals negative 8, okay? So that's what you do, right? No matter what problem you're dealing with, um, we're going to take these steps. First, we got to check we got a 1x squared. Got everything in standard form, then we move the number over. Now, this is the next thing we need to do, right? We take this middle term, like our middle coefficient. In this case, it's negative 9, okay? And we're going to divide that by 2. No matter what that is, you'll always divide that by 2. And when you do that, you're going to get, obviously in this example, uh, negative 9 halves. But what we're going to do is we're going to square that. So this is the next thing with completing the square, the next step. You take that middle coefficient, divide it by 2. It's always divided by 2. 
and then whatever that value is, we square it. And uh, we're going to take that, this, the result of doing that, and we're going to add it to both sides of the equation, right? So that leaves us with x squared minus 9x plus negative 9 halves squared equals negative 8 plus, okay, I added it over here as well. So whatever you add on the left-hand side, you got to add on the right-hand side, negative 9 halves squared, okay? So if, you, if this is confusing, it can, can be. That's why you got to really have good notes. And, of course, you can watch this uh, video again and just, you know, follow the precise steps. So again, once you know how to do one problem, all problems are going to, you're going to do all problems the same way, all right? The values, of course, are going to be different, but the procedure will not change. Okay, let's move down. And now let's clean this up. All right, so we have x squared minus 9x plus negative 9 halves squared. Okay, so when I square negative 9 halves squared, it's going to be negative 9 halves times negative 9 halves, and that will be 81 over 4. So the left-hand side is going to be x squared minus 9x plus 81 over 4. Then on the right-hand side, I have negative 8 plus 81 over 4, right? It's just negative 9 halves squared. And now I've got to go ahead and apply my awesome fraction skills. And let's start with the right-hand side. Let's have negative 8 plus 81 over 4, okay? Uh, when you do this fraction addition, you'll end up with 49 over 4, okay? Now, this is the beautiful part. Once, you're, once we have this right here, this negative 9 halves squared, this is technically what we, what we did here is just complete the square, all right? This is where the name comes from, all right? If you want to just see it. Here, we have x squared minus 9x. What I'm trying to do is create a square. So I'm completing this square by doing this little procedure here, and now I have completed the square right here, x squared minus 9x plus 81 over 4, and I can write this thing, okay, this whole little trinomial as a square. That's the whole idea. So x squared minus 9x plus 81 over 4, okay, you can factor or um, write this as a square, and of course, with your excellent factoring skills, you'll see this is equivalent to x minus 9 halves squared. So if you are struggling with this, of course, this is x squared. That'll just be an x. And then, of course, the square root of this is 9 halves. So you can just write this as x minus 9 halves squared. And if you did the multiplication, you foil that, you'll see that you would get back to this uh, quadratic trinomial. Okay, so again, you got to be good with factoring, but this is the key. Okay, we just completed this square right here, and the reason, uh, the way we were able to do that is by adding this negative nine half squared to both sides. So at this point, okay, I have a quadratic equation that you should be able to solve. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and finish this guy up. All right, all right. So now. Uh, to solve for x, I want to take the square root of both sides. Okay, so I'm going to take the square root of this side, because this is a square now, and I can take the square root of this, and that would look like so. All right, so that's the square root of x minus 9 half squared is equal to the square root of 49 over 4. And let me scroll down here. All right, so when I uh, uh, take the square root of uh, x minus 9 half squared, I just, I'm just left with x minus 9 halves, okay? Equals the square root of 49 over 4. This is going to be equal to positive and negative. Remember, when you're taking the square root of a real number like 4, you're going to have uh, both a positive and negative root, okay? So positive and negative 2. And this is how we're going to get our two solutions. Remember, we're dealing with quadratic equations. Quadratic equations always have two solutions. So when I take the square root, uh, this is really important of this uh, number on the right hand side you're going to get you're going to get positive negative in this case seven halves all right so at this point okay um, we're almost there we're going to have two equations now so I'm saying x minus nine halves is equal to a positive seven and a half and a negative seven and a half so let's go and write out this equation with the positive seven halves first. So we're going to solve x minus nine halves is equal to positive seven halves. And then we're also going to solve this equation, x minus nine, nine halves is equal to negative seven halves. Okay, so this is going to be our uh, first solution, and this will be our second solution when we solve 
for x. And now let's go ahead and just do that basic math here. So here I'm gonna obviously add 9 halves to both sides of the equation. And when I do that, you, we get x is equal to 16 over 2 or 8. Okay, so this is my uh, first solution. And up here, you can see I'm gonna go ahead and add 9 halves to negative 7 halves to solve for x. And so I get x is equal to 2 over 2 or 1. And these are uh, 8 and 1 are the solutions to that quadratic equation. And we got there by completing the square. Okay. Now, you could have taken, let's go all the way up here. Okay. You could have taken this guy and plugged all this into the quadratic formula and you would have um, uh, been able to do this, right? Matter of fact, you likely could have done this by factoring, okay, as well, all right? So, but the point is I wanted to use nice and easy numbers just to uh, reinforce the procedure to complete the square, or you need to know um, how to do this. And a lot of students, you know, again, they'll say, oof, one, they don't like doing the procedure, and I can understand because it is long and painful. They're like, well, you know, I don't really need to know this if I already know how to use a quadratic formula. Yeah, it's kind of kind of true, all right? We're going to use the quadratic formula more than completing the square. But again, you need to know how to do this. It's definitely going to be on tests and quizzes, and it will come up again. All right, so, um, you know, I like to leave these videos with this obvious thing. And that is uh, this, just watching me do a problem is not enough. If you really want to uh, learn this stuff, you got to practice, uh, um, you know, completing a square, right? It's very easy to make a little tiny mistake, but the more you practice the procedure, the better you're going to uh, be at it. And um, so definitely encourage you to practice. Also, if you enjoyed this video, if you like this video, definitely uh, consider smashing that like button. And also, if you're new to my YouTube channel and you like my teaching style, again, um, my best resources are going to be my math help program, but I have hundreds and hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel organized in uh, various playlists that are there to help you out. So hopefully, um, you know, you'll uh, follow my work, okay, as I'm um, creating new math uh, videos every day, okay, or at least mostly every day. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.